Let us pray. O holy God, we have gathered in your name. Speak to us, we pray. Let your word make a difference in who we are and in how we serve you and love you. And we pray that the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth might be acceptable in your sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. (coughs) Son. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, serve the Lord with presence, with singing. Know ye that the Lord is, know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Once upon a time, called the Depression, once upon a place not so very far from here, it was a very hot day. And the ice cream shop in town was doing a great business that day. A little girl clutched her money in her hand. Tightly, she did not want to lose it, for she had been saving for this treat. And as she came to the ice cream shop and pushed on the door, she could already taste the cold, creamy, and she'd been dreaming of strawberry ice cream. As she entered the the ice cream shop, she was stopped. For the man behind the counter looked at her and told her to stop, to go back outside and to read the sign and not to come in again until she had some shoes. As she backed out of the door, her bottom lip was trembling and a big man noticed and followed her. The big man watched as she read the sign that said, No bare feet. Tears threatened as she turned to walk away. You see, she had no shoes. Her family received new shoes in the fall of the year after the tobacco was sold. She wouldn't have shoes again until October, maybe. September at the earliest, for now they would cram their feet back into last year's shoes to go to church on Sunday, but today she had no shoes. As she began to walk, the man called out to her, and he sat down on the curb, and he took off his size 12 shoes. He pushed them over to her and he said, Honey, I know you can't walk in these, but you can kind of shuffle along in their shoes. Go get your ice cream. And the little girl put her little feet in his big shoes. And she went back in the store. Her eyes were shining. He was a big man. He had big shoes. He had a bigger heart. And I would ask you, was he serving or was he worshiping?
If you said both, then you already understand something very important about the psalm we just shared. For that psalm points us to understand that worship and service are two sides of the same relationship. When we serve, we worship. When we worship, we serve. You see, this particular psalm grows out of early worship. And it shows us how people used to do it. How the ancient Israelites would come in. Come on in. They would come in and enter the gates and enter the courts. And as they made each step inside, they were more and they were praising and giving thanks and singing. For they understood that they were coming closer to the very place that they associated with encountering God. And they were excited about that. They knew who their God is and they knew who they were. God's own people. Claimed by God. We as Christians would expand that and say that we are saved by God through Jesus Christ. (laughs) They understood that and they were excited about coming in. And as they came into the gates and they they realized that the their understanding and the way that they would express their relationship with God was that God was their king, their lord, their sovereign and the proper response to one sovereign is to worship and to serve. It shows up in the second verse. You see we read serve the Lord with gladness. That Hebrew word that is translated as serve, avad, can also be translated as worship. If you're reading a more modern translation, then you're reading worship the Lord with gladness. Worship, serve. There's two sides of the same thing. When you worship, you serve. When you serve, you worship. So what is worship? Worship is an authentic encounter with the Lord. It is a corporate experience, something we do together whenever we experience the living Lord. And it comes in all kind of forms and all kind of ways because we're all kind of people. But the main thing is that in worship we draw closer to God in our praying and our singing. In the words spoken and proclaimed. In sight seen, in experience, in the taste of the bread and the cup, in the feel of the water, we draw close to God. And it's not one way, for in worship we also feel God moving upon us, nudging us, guiding us, calling us, affirming us, and claiming us. Worship is a re- expresses our relationship, and God said, "Do it." And I'm glad you're obedient. And this about worship too: if it's always comfortable, and you're always feeling good, and you always get this feeling, this pumped up feeling of "Yay, Jesus!" It isn't worship, because in worship, God comes back to us. And sometimes challenges us. Sometimes God makes us squirm. If all you get out of worship is to feel good, you're just at a show. And that's not worship. 